Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast for two lifelong friends talking about life for a long time. I'm Red. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, I have no clue what you're going to talk about. I'm back, man. You're back? Um... One of the things that I I do want to talk about, I didn't tell you about this, was um, you know reached a big milestone with uh, my second child, Lincoln, uh, sending him out of the house, sending him off to college. Yep, but he uh, didn't get a full podcast about it because you know he's the second one. He's child. a middle child, right, so, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. I I hadn't I hadn't told you about the details of it. And, and you, something specific that happened that um, walking around crying, heaving, crying. Was that part a, of it? Well, I'm. I will say that uh, <laughs> I embarrassed myself in front of oh, you, the faculty. Oh, oh. So that's my teaser. Uh, what do you want? What do you want to talk about? Well, I know you talked about uh, your trip. I have just a little tidbit from my trip that I that I want to talk about. Uh, you, you, you're uh, talking about your solo camping trip that I explained in the last episode that we had tandem solo camping trips. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I didn't really talk about yours except for like the 10-minute 10, the 10 minute meeting that we had in the middle of not ever seeing anyone else for five days. Uh, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about that. I'll tell you where I've been. And why I kind of sound like I sound right now. Which... Yeah, well, you still, I mean, you still sound sick. Uh, I'm not. Everybody knows that you've been sick. But I mean, you're you're still sick. Uh, I'm not sick in the way that ma- I'm not sick in the way that matters. I'm I've just been through I've been through a battle. I've been through a week long battle, and so my body is just like, well, we haven't completely. Uh, what about me having to carry all the weight here yeah, at Mythical? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jenna was here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you're okay. Yeah, you're right. She pretty much carried the weight, and I think you. She's not here today. I think it's either one or the she other. She had to now. leave. After after doing this podcast with you, she had to leave town. <laughs> no, she did leave town, but um, you should be threatened. I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, and I also when have... When she comes back, I might... I need to make a tough choice. Okay. Uh, I also have an update for you. Uh, one of the things that I did while I was sick was I watched a lot of programming, as I like to say, as an old man. I never watch television anymore, and I don't watch. And I watch movies occasionally, but like I just never sit down and binge a show. Like I mean, I did that's something I did 15 years ago, maybe, but I just don't have time for it anymore. So I that's did the that. silver lining. I of watched being an sick. entire season of a television show in one day. Wow! Don't if your eyes get any bigger, you might let some germs in. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that show, and I'm going to tell you what I learned. Oh, we're still in teaser mode about uh, about something because it applies to you, and I think it, it, it elucidates something that happened to you that you've talked about on this podcast before. Okay. But I'll start let me I'll start with the little, just a quick update on what I experienced on the solo trip most notably um was I was as you know, you probably already talked about the fact that I found an incredible campsite that then you enjoyed for a couple yeah, of days. You didn't listen to my podcast without you? It hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> but no, I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> so no on both counts. Uh, it's it was it was really good. I thought I'm sure it was. And I'm I, sure I'll see inevitably. I thought I got great feedback. I, I'm sure in the I'll future be about inf- it. inevitably confronted with clips from it in various forms of social media that the algorithm thinks that I'm interested in. The algorithm thinks that I'm interested in mythical content, and when I see it, I'm like, how should I tell? What should I tell the algorithm about this? You know what I'm saying? Should I tell I it? Mean, that I mean, we kind of have a vested interest in Oh, I always like it. If something mythical comes in the algorithm, I'll heart it and move on. Because I'm like, what does that tell the algorithm? He likes it, but he doesn't like it to watch a lot of it. Yeah, I think you actually need to watch it. But what's one guy going to do? I feel like by liking it and moving on, I'm just keeping, I'm not contributing to it. Right. Okay. Negatively or positively. It's All like, right. a, well, I never saw it. So... That campsite that I found, uh, the, the, which yeah, is so beautiful, it was the best campsite I've ever seen. One of the, one of the, yeah, one you of gave the best me a solid. I thought I was giving you a solid when we when we camp swapped. Do you want to give me a? You, you want me to give you a campsite review on your campsite? I know it wasn't as good, but it was bec- there wasn't enough cloud cover to give you a stunning sunset. I'm just gonna be honest with you. On a scale of one to ten. With the sunset that I could see through the trees the night that you got to enjoy the sunset, that campsite's a 10. Nine. Okay? Nine. Yeah. 
without the sunset because that sunset didn't happen the next day because I don't know how sunsets work, but I kept watching it and just waiting for it to do the beautiful it was a cloud barrage cover. of colors that had happened the night before. You missed out, man. And I was like, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I was like, well, maybe it happens. I literally sat there and I was like, maybe it happens right before the sun goes down. And then I just kind of watched the sun go away. And I was like, maybe it happens right after the sun goes down. And I was- We were I'm, having like opposite experiences. And I'm sitting there looking at it thinking- You were having the most disappointing- That campsite's a four. <laughs> when the sun doesn't set sunset. right. Just being honest with you, it's a four. <laughs> you sent me to a four. Hey man, I did the best I could. Um, but while I was at that wonderful campsite, uh, actually the, uh, not the first night I, I, I spent there, but when I woke up and I was lying on the rock overlooking that lake. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about the, 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 the great campsite. Yeah. Um, I was listening to some uh, synth music, you know, <laughs> so many genres. Synth music? I was listening to that uh, Mort Garson that you Oh, yeah, he's to. great. And uh, he's a synth pioneer, and I, it's the music is, is whimsical. It's weird and whimsical. Depends on what album you're on, but I, I was listening to it, and then I would notice like like this dissonant synth that he put into the, one of the songs. I was like, oh, that's an interesting choice, Mort. Interesting choice, dissonant synth. <laughs> hmm. And then the next song rolled around. I was like, oh. Uh, Another dissonant synth. <laughs> it was, have I never noticed these dissonant synths that seem ill-timed out of nowhere? Okay. Third song rolls around. It happens again. I'm like, that's, and I turn the music off and I wait. And then I hear, oh, coming from the fucking van. <laughs> dissonant synth. It was wasn't coming more, from the van? it was the van. Now, it actually, I have a, like, it makes me feel weird when I talk about it because it was so jarring to me and it really impacted my entire trip. <laughs> Something happened. When you're alone, it all bets are off in terms of how any anomaly can be taken, it didn't processed, it didn't and scare, interpreted. It didn't scare me, but it annoyed me. And it was pretty damn loud. And it turns out that it was the- Coming from where in the van? The automatic awning. Yeah, you push a button, e awning goes out. Right. And I bit, you know what? So and, there's a wind sensor. And if you, drive, if you drive off with the awning out, the awning will go in. And if a big wind comes up. Well, as soon as you crank the car, the van up, it automatically closes. Yeah, because you don't want to be driving down the street with an awning out by accident. But if a big gust of wind comes up, it'll sense that and go in too. Yeah. So. Pretty smart. There is a, a motion detector on the edge of the awning, precisely to detect wind, mm -hmm. and then to bring it in. And because it was out in a little, and there wasn't a lot of wind on that trip. I mean, it was crazy. The weather was super hot, but it was also not very windy on, a, on top of a mountain, which was unusual. But a little wind that day, and it caused it to go off. But then it started going every thirty seconds. Eventually, I read the manual and learned that it said that it was the batteries needed to be replaced in the motion sensor, which, by the way, I did replace and it didn't stop. Oh, wow. You had to, you went deep. You had batteries to replace it? Uh, I took two batteries out of uh, like a flashlight that I had. Two, two AA batteries. You MacGyver. And I like literally, I, there were some old men uh, hiking that trail where right when I was going to, when I met you and we had our little rendezvous. Yeah. <laughs> rendezvous. We didn't get out of the car. No. It made it sound like we like went to a campsite and, you know. No, no. Fondled one another, but that's not what happened. Uh, it didn't sound like that? No, I'm just trying to feed the rumors. That's, I'm just making sure Fondled that. Fondled each other. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, there, I, there's people out there who live their life. I barely hung out the window. Wanting to believe that we had a rendezvous. I barely made eye contact with you. I know, I looked at your dog more than you, but I'm just, I'm interested in making those people, I want, I want them clicking, I get, they gotta keep clicking. You trying to give this thing a, a title? So, so fondling rendezvous? So. We're so desperate. Uh, we went to that bull tree, the bull tree trail. Yes, and, I've already uh, talked all about it. You should have listened to the podcast. And the old men but it's not out were there. there, and uh, they, 
And I was like, hey, guys, do you have a screwdriver? I, I was like, I'm, I'm going a little bit crazy here. This thing's making this noise. Like, it was oh, wow. so loud that, like, as my van was parked in a parking lot with, like, two other people, I was, like, kind of embarrassed. And now as I began to walk that trail, I was like, how deep into the woods am I going to get before I stop hearing my van's noise? And, you, you may live the rest of your life and first of all, hearing it. I'm out of service. Like, I don't have cell service in any of these spots. And I, and I, but I was like, I'm going to replace the batteries myself. I replaced the batteries. The sound never went away. I had to put earplugs in for two nights Ooh. to sleep. And eventually, on the way back home is when the sound stopped uh, with no explanation. Uh, I don't dude, so that, I think it was a that short sucks, I think it man. was a short now all yeah, this you know to what say, don't listen to the previous podcast where I gushed about how amazing <laughs> my solo trip was, how life changing it was, how i I can't stop thinking about how I want to experience it again. It's my new happy place that I close my eyes and picture. I'm happy I'm, for you. I'm happy for you. Don't, I don't, but I don't want to rub it in. Um, well, with or without the sound, <laughs> I would not have had that experience because, <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess this is going to serve as my ear biscuits announcement. I don't know when I'll talk about this on my own social media or whatever. But, uh, you know, I do a little music on the side as James and the Shame. And I didn't really expect this to happen this year, but a couple of things fell into place, and I've got a, a little EP that's coming out in November. James and the Shame is back with an EP. And, How uh, many songs is that? Uh, well, technically six or less, and right now it looks like it is going to be six. Um, we've got five completely mixed and mastered, and there's okay. one that is, uh, we're, we're dialing it in. There's some time, we're trying to figure some stuff out. However, uh, a little teaser, I mean, someone that you may or may not know that may or may not be in this room may, uh, may I don't know, may have been involved in, in a tra one of the tracks. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, more on that later. Yeah. But the first track. Someone who's known for his beatboxing skills. Yeah, yep, exactly. All the drums on the enti entire EP are from Elk Hound Snuggle Baby. <laughs> His mouth. <laughs> um, ironically, the the project is called Nothing Left to Love. I'll talk about this. I'm not. I don't. You know. I don't think for the follow up EP you do a whole podcast or in the listening party. And you know, that was kind of like I, that was like the first go around. But I'll probably talk about this in in different pieces or whatever we as can different talk about as it. different things come out. But nothing left to love. Nothing left to love, which is the name of that first track that I. You, oh yeah. That, that you've that you've heard, other than the one that you may or may not be involved with. Um, which I. And I, that's the I, first I, single. I loved. That's the first single, but also the name of the EP. I don't know. I don't know what convention is, and I don't really care. And so I just kind of do it what feels right. And so the name of the EP is nothing left to love. That's also the name of the first single. So, okay. um, because. It's basically a it's 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 basically sort of like an ode to Enneagram threes, you know, performance minded people, people who are just doing stuff and they're just trying to do more and more stuff and they don't know exactly why they're trying to they're trying to fill the empty void inside by doing stuff, okay, um, achieving things with this with this and I, and I, that lyric will make sense. I'll talk about it later. Anyway, so the ironic thing is, is that. This whole album is kind of an example of that. It's just like, why do a, why do more? I don't know. I can't help myself. And so I just did it, and here it is, and I'm throwing it out there, whatever. But then what I did is I turned my solo trip into a work trip in which I was going to film myself singing some of these songs out in these beautiful locations. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert, at least for that first track, I don't think any of the stuff I shot for the first song is going to work because I just couldn't ever sing it right. It's a, not an easy song for me to oh, sing. Oh, like a lot. It was a live performance, not lip sync stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it's kind of a TikTok trend that I actually I'm kind of into is just like people setting up a microphone like in the wilderness and singing a song. And I was like, oh, this is actually kind of a cool vibe for this album. And so, um, so a lot. You, you told me you were going to do this. And I was like, I was a little bummed for you. I mean, I was happy for you that this was coming out and that you had this time just with yeah. you and your guitar and I guess your camera and your your beeping van <laughs> to like, you know, to to uh, cover your own songs. 
But I was yeah. like, okay, yeah, so now your solo trip is not, it becomes a work. It, I, I think it's going to feel different. So I was a little bummed for you. But this is the I rub. I was concerned for this you. This is the rub. This is the rub. When am I going to go into the, such a beautiful location? And I'm not going to make a special trip for this because my, my job is what we do at Mythical. My job isn't my music. It's my side project. And so it fits. It wasn't going to take all of your time anyway. No, but because I haven't shot video in a long like the only video that we've shot everything takes longer is like the vlogs yeah, yeah, from yeah. a couple of years ago, which now we even made the decision to not do that. And just let, you know, other folks shoot that. And but I got this new camera, which I'm gonna you know, I'm I am excited about this. <sighs> okay. So you okay, so you know that uh I bought that Pentax for like a hundred bucks or whatever. I don't like the the, the, the film camera. Yeah, we would de develop the film. And I've still got like four or five undeveloped rolls of film because it's like it's a pain in the ass to get film developed. And then I stopped taking it with me on trips because I had to like get the guy at the TSA to like put take a bag and not take the film through the new machines and stuff. Oh. But I really love photography, and I was like, I I want to I want to be able to take cool pictures. And that so was a layer. It was a layer. Uh, well, it, it was a phase. No, oh, no, no. That has ended. No, no, it hasn't. Film ended. camera phase is over. No, it isn't because I started watching all these YouTube videos, and I started and I and so I started learning about Fuji film cameras, right? And and when I say Fuji film, I mean Fuji film, the brand. And so they've got these. And I'm, this is for those people who like know about this stuff. I'm just going to sound like a, a nimwit, but uh, a nimwit. I, I don't, a dimwit. Yeah. <laughs> A nimrod or a dimwit? No, you sound like a nimwit. A nimwit. Um, <laughs> I know nothing, so. So they have these film recipes, essentially, where people have figured out how to, uh, well, Fuji also contributes to this, basically. There's settings on the camera, and then people have, like, dialed them in in very specific ways to, like, mimic very particular films. And you can get really close to, like, oh, if you were to shoot on film with this film, it's not perfect. But if you're just me and you're just going for vibes. When you say emulate films, you're not talking about like Dr. Shivago. You're talking about specific film stocks. Film stocks, okay. So like Portra All 400 right. or whatever. Oh, okay. And so I've been experimenting you're with that. You're losing me. But also, it has some really cool settings for shooting uh, video that look very cinematic in a way that just like got a cool vibe. So I shot, everything I shot was in that kind of like filmic vibe. But, you know, just because I've got the camera out and I have a very little bit of battery, I'm going to, I got a setting on here. Uh, it's called uh, 70s Summer. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take some 70s Summer shot. Because, by the what, way. What should I do? Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm getting back into taking more photos. And okay. So a lot of my photos will be of you. Okay. Uh, because you're here. And uh, just so you know, so just do, just do cool stuff. Make cool faces. Uh, yeah, that's, oh, that's cool. Okay, that's a little too much white on your shirt, you know. Kind of look more pensive. Uh, I'm know. leaning back. Maybe, uh, I'll, maybe I'll be forward. Good action shot. Maybe we'll... Oh, yeah, okay, that's it. Prayer? Oh, that's, well, I got to let me switch that up. That's, wow. I'm, I'm praying, but do I have a double chin when I pray? I don't want to. Do it again? Pray some more? Okay, and I got a different setting in here. Let me go to that. Let me go to my. Is it? I have a black and white negative setting, which I, which is kind of crazy. It's crazy what this one looks like. And I'm gonna act like I'm covering up the lens. Oh, that was a cool shot. Again. Okay, uh, now just pensive again. Pray again. Pray again. Yeah, pray. It's, you're praying in black and white now. Dear God, let's let, me let sure. him get done with this quickly because I'm bored out of my mind. Okay, I got some good shots. Okay, uh, you're going to be impressed with that. Okay, maybe what we'll do is we'll just put them right here in the in the. In yeah, the, look at uh, that immediate gratification. That's even if, though if you're not, watching. If you're watching, this is all about getting. See, again, I'm, what do you? I'm so always, you took this camera. I'm always thinking about strategy. You got to understand. I took pictures of you. Yes. So that the people who just listen will be like, well, now I got to watch. Yeah. Two, two double, views. Two double views. views. Double views. Um, but. When that sound happened, <laughs> I started listening to it and I was like, I think it's happening at a pretty predictable rate. I think, it, I don't know how many seconds it is, 
But so I just like, I was kind of going nuts. I got my guitar out because I had my You didn't guitar. have a dog. That would have helped. No, a dog would have been a nightmare in this situation when you're trying to film yourself singing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I start playing and I kind of time out like a certain pace in a chord structure that will predictably have spaces for this sound. <laughs> okay. And to embrace it. And it felt like like a, uh, you know, this sort of... Lemonade out of lemons. Yeah, exactly. So I wrote a song, and I was like, this song, if I, this, this song about this beep is probably going to get more traction than any of my actual music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You wrote a song about the beep. <clears throat> so I wrote a song about the beep. And which included will, which, the beep. Which will be released at some point. I mean, not as like a... I mean, it'll just be on my social media or whatever. Again, it's all about playing the game, Link. You gotta get people to care yeah, it's about. It's all it. about achieving. It's yeah, exactly. Ironically, um, so anyway, that was what my that was. I think I actually learned quite a bit. I journaled quite a bit. Did you journal? Uh, a little. I jotted. I would not call it journaling. More Be of a summary. Because, I, you know, man, it's just like I, I'm continuing. The thing that therapy has allowed me to do. I've always known that I've been, you know. Everybody's a little bit messed up, but I've always known that a dimrod. I'm a, a nimwit. Yeah, <laughs> I've always known that I've got issues. That you know, everybody's got issues. You got to work through throughout your life. But is I think it, that, is it time for the better health integration? I, th I think that therapy ga gave me tools to you, to to like yeah, go yeah. up to the proverbial battery compartment in your awning okay. and unscrew it. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it gives you some tools. So uh, I think that's one of the things that the the trip was able to do for me. I was like, this trip is so emblematic of the way that I approach things, which is like, you got a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're relaxing, but this is also a great opportunity for you to do the things that you need to do for this thing that you've signed yourself up for that no one mm -hmm. asked you to do. Right. No one asked for, well, so, okay, some people ask for more music. I will say that. There are people who ask for more music, but that, but this whole thing has been about me doing stuff for for me. You know, like, the I, I felt like these songs were in there. I got I to gotta get them out. But still, I found a way to turn it into work, and then this eh, 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 mm -hmm. eh, eh, yeah. started happening, and I was like, "What does that? What does that beep represent?" It, you know, and I'm still, I'm That's still, I'm still figuring out what it represents. But I did write a song about it. Uh, it's the gnawing reality that you still have work to do. Well, and so do I. Do you, and, and, but we, we basically. In totally different ways, we had the same experience of getting in touch with ourselves and like for me, experiencing the, per the perfection of my campsite and my environment exposed my dependence on that. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of self-exploration that I think you were having, you know, we were both having. Well, so I think, I think the thing cool. that I ended up writing down now that I'm thinking about it was this beep, what it sim symbolizes to me is that you come up here to the mountains to be alone, to get away from everything, to get away from everyone, but you're still with yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wherever you, you go, there you are. And yourself is not, it's, I mean, it's not something that you, uh, in many senses, it's not something that you like. It's something that comes with issues and things that you got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're being honest with yourself, you got a lot of shit that you brought up here besides this van that's messing up. Just the guy that came up here with me, which is me, <laughs> it got a lot of shit that he brought. And it's just on display for myself Yeah. in this place. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad you were able to turn the frustration into some s sort of meaning. You were able to pivot and not just be miserable. I mean, you were, m you were miserable in a sense, but not as miserable as you could have been. You know, you used it. Yeah, it, it now, it w like even the next morning, I, I went to sleep that night with those, uh, you know, like the, uh, the wax. I, I luckily had wax earplugs. Oh, wow. Which you hey listen if you having trouble sleeping you got a, a partner that snores, you got people upstairs in your apartment building that make a lot of noise. 
You can do the noise. I don't know what a wax. You can do the noise I know machine. What you can wax do the, is. the foam, you know, the foam yeah. earplugs. But when you go to the foam earplug section of your local pharmacy, there will also be these clear-ish wax earplugs. And there'll be a pack of them because you're, I mean, you probably shouldn't use them more than once or I don't know how often you should use them, but they're like. You put them in hot water first or something? No, no, no. They're soft wax. And you take, you do the reach around, <laughs> you pull on your ear, you take one of these suckers. Well, you roll it out and make it a little bit flat. And then you stick it, I mean, long. It's you like st- putting a tooth you roll in, in your ear. And then you press it down and it completely conforms to the exact shape of your ear canal. Well, but, but how do you get it out? Well, it does say warning. If you push these too hard, they may be difficult to get out, but I've never had a problem with them. No, there's still, there's still so much wax that it's like sticking out. Bro, these things, you can't hear anything. Like, I, you, an axe you, murderer could have been just gnawing on the side of the van and I would have had no idea. Oh, that would be a meth addict. Yeah. So... I highly recommend these. They're way, I don't know how many decibels, but it's way more than the foam ones. Yeah. Is it such that like you're hearing like your internal processes? Like that's off putting to me when I'm like, I don't think so. I'm like hearing Hear your heartbeat. Yeah. Hearing your heartbeat. Swallow. Hear, yeah. Hearing like your eyes move. <laughs> yeah. Your eyes move in the sockets. <laughs> no, none of that. None of that happened. None of that happened. And I could also just like jump in a creek and not worry about getting worms in my ears. <laughs> I, you got to get these wax wax, wax plugs. Man. Okay, okay, all right, fine. I I jotted down one of the things was just preparing for the fact that Lincoln was leaving. So I do want to talk about that. I do want to mention, first of all, that we have new mugs. We got a new season of Good Mythical Morning, new season. You know what that means, new mug. Woo! This, it's, it's the classic GMM on that side, but then as it goes around here, take a look at that. Can you believe it? And not only is that a super cool design, <coughs> it's the cockatrice blowing the flame of Good Mythical Morning in a landscape configuration. It's glow in the dark. It's freaking glow in the freaking dark. Mm. And um, that's gonna help you get it to your mouth in the blackout. <laughs> Which is inev- inevitably coming. Mythical.com, get yourself some of that. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. You know, sometimes uh, I just feel very, very American in the fact that I can only speak one one English. <laughs> <laughs> one English? <laughs> one language, and that is English. You know, I, I just, I'm just not as interesting as I could be, Link. Let's just be honest. And well, you said it, man. Uh, not just for the, for the utility of it. It would be nice to speak another language to, you know, fluently communicate with other but people, the bragging but mostly it. it's about the way people would think about me if I were able to speak another language. Is this how Rosetta Stone wants us to I mean, s- sell I, their products? I don't think Rosetta Stone cares how, like, why you want to learn. They just, they want to provide a way for you to learn if you do. Rosetta Stone is the most trusted language learning program, and it truly immerses you in the language you want to learn for whatever reasons you want to learn it. They've used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and 25 languages offered, including French, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, Polish, just to name a few. It also immerses you in many ways designed for long-term retention. There are no English translations, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Plus, they have a built-in true accent feature that gives you feedback on your pronunciation, like having a personal trainer for your accent. That's cool, and it's an amazing value. A lifetime membership, that's a lifetime membership, has all 25 languages for any and all language needs in your life. It's a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $179. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com ear today. Ear Biscuits is supported by Thrive Market. Whenever I go to the grocery store and I'm like trying to get something and then I'm looking at the different prices for the different types of the same thing, I I, I get overwhelmed, man. 
and I still don't know if I'm getting the best price or the best thing. That's where Thrive Market. Well, it sounds like you need Thrive Market, Lee. It, I, I, it really does, doesn't it? Well, Thrive Market is one of my go-tos for when I need organic grocery and household essentials, and the convenience of getting it all quickly shipped to my doorstep is a huge time saver. I save money every time I order. I think I saved like fifty dollars last time I used it. The Chomp beef sticks we have in the office are so much cheaper through Thrive than at the store. On top of the massive savings on each order, Thrive Market has a deals page that changes daily and gives cash back on so many brands and they have a price match guarantee. Not only does Thrive Market Thrive, I like how you said Thrive. Thrive Market save me money, but they also save me time. I love the filters on their website or app. They have over 70. Whether you're looking for certified gluten-free snacks or non-toxic cleaning essentials, you can curate your own shopping experience with the click of a button. One of my favorite parts is that when you join Thrive Market, you're also helping a family in need with their one-for-one -one membership matching program. You join, they get. Join in on the savings with Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash ear for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash ear. Thrivemarket.com slash ear. Did you think about that while you were out there? That about like the collapse of civilization? No. No. Oh. <laughs> I did. That's not one of the problems that I was trying to tackle. I just can't help it when I'm out there and I'm alone. I just can't help but think like, man, what would I do if like everything ended while I was up here? I was emotionally processing or emotionally preparing for. Um, at the time, it was just like a few weeks later, and now it's happened, uh, taking Lincoln off to college. Mm -hmm. And um, when we took Lily and dropped her off for college, there's a couple of things. First of all, it was still like during the pandemic, and like there was, I didn't, it, I didn't realize that a typical taking your kid off to college, there's like programmatic stuff that the university usually like invites you to and like when you dropped off lock like you you as a parent showed up for different things and like right we did a little bit of that I, well there was a lot of that for lincoln and i was wasn't expecting it because there was none of that for lily and it was just you know the other thing it, was, it is it is somewhat school specific as well okay yeah that's probably true um the other thing was and you know i talked about it extensively at this table was I was convinced, I, I was f fully giving myself to processing emotionally Lily leaving and like, so yeah, there was like that night of like a lot of crying alone and just thinking about what, like what a momentous occasion this was and everything that it meant and what it might mean for the future of our relationship and that type of stuff. Um, that was a rewarding. I honestly, I found myself thinking, I felt more prepared. Uh, I didn't feel as emotionally volatile this time around. And then I started to feel bad about that. And I was like, man, is, is, is it, is that, is the middle child thing happening where it's like, okay, second one, yeah, doesn't, I'm not as worked up about this emotionally. And then I've still got one at home. You know, they don't really represent as much as the first kid or the last kid leaving. Well, there is a lot to that middle kid thing, and you know he's 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 weathered all that like a champ. But then I started to realize that that wasn't really the reason why I wasn't as emotional. It was definitely a part of it. Like everything wasn't new. But the experience that I've had with with Lily since moving her in, has had a profound impact on how I approach this. Um, I've seen Lily a lot. She's been back quite a few. She's few been times. she's she's come back home a good a good amount, and I've gone to see her. We've gone to see her. It's not like I I think I was afraid and thought that you know the nature of our relationship was going to change when she moved out to the point where like the, our relationship would be so much less. But actually, even though there's a lot more distance and there hasn't been nearly as 
much quantity of time together, the quality of the time that we've had together, I would say, has increased and in more than uh, superseded like how we worked before, like how our relationship worked. So I actually experienced the fact that like we continue to grow and we have a lot of valuable experiences together and our relationship is still very vibrant and she's still a very connected part of our family. And I don't think I, I, I expected that to happen. I was mourning the loss of something that I actually didn't lose. And that totally informed and made me, once I realized that, I started to feel better to the point where I actually told Lincoln. I'm like, you may have noticed that I haven't been as worked up as I was when Lily left. And I want you to know that I've realized that it doesn't have as much to do with you being the middle child or, or certainly that I, that I love you less or, and feel, or feel less connected to you than I do to Lily. It has nothing to do with that. It's that the experience He of, said, Dad, I, I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> right. He, yeah, he wasn't like... I'm an 18-year-old guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, yeah, I, that is kind of what his response was. Uh, he was like, "It's cool. It's it's cool, Dad. I I know that you care about me and that you're you're engaged in what's happening with with me leaving, <clears throat> but it really did alter the complexion of how I approached it. You know, I was able to be a a lot happier, a lot more excited for Lincoln than I was for Lily. You know, because I think I was a lot more sad for myself." <laughs> <laughs> with with the with the first one, you know. So um, we take Lincoln, we take him down there, and then we had packed up everything. But like the first day was like programmatic stuff. Like there's a there's a all the freshmen and their parents like go in this place, and like you hear from the president of the university, and then there's like these information sessions, and then we split up, and the parents have like a mixer and then and the students have their own separate thing and it was it was like a lot so much so that it was like the second day when we showed up that we actually moved him into his dorm room met his roommates and all of that stuff uh, so that first night before we moved him in we were invited to a smaller gathering where we had the opportunity to meet the president of the university and some of the deans of the different colleges and um, this is when you embarrass yourself. It was like, yeah, it was like a okay. mixer. Yeah, and you, um, you didn't have to go to this. Uh, we were excited to go to it, and Lando was there, Christy was there, me and Lincoln were there. We were kind of like semi dressed up. We want to put on, you know, put your best foot forward. Okay, he's already know? in though. <laughs> he's already well, in. Well, you know, you want to make a good impression with the dean. Of of his college and stuff like Get that. Get still, still respect the, the college, college dean. dean. <laughs> um, I had a bar, but I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like drinking. It's not like I got shit faced. <laughs> I, 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 I got a diet coke. Okay. And then Lily and Christy were sitting down, and then one of the like the head of, um. I don't know what her title is, but she's like the main person in charge of like the liaison between like incoming students, their parents, and like maintaining that connection. Like she was, she was introducing me to another dean, Lincoln and I to another dean, and two seniors who were like basically in a club that you know they talked up their college experience. And so I got it. You got to meet some seniors. You got to meet a dean. You got to meet this this woman who's like. Uh, moving and shaking and bringing everybody into the university, and we're so we're we're talking in a circle, and um, it was going great, and I you know I was having I was like saying something and I was really into it, uh -oh. and so my left hand Lincoln was to my left, and then the uh, the the head of the the thing that I don't know her title. Mm. She was she was to his left, and and I'm holding with my left hand my diet coke, and I'm gesturing with my right hand. Yeah, had to figure and, it out for a second. And so here my here my right hand oh, no. is you, gesturing. You clip the cup through my left hand, and it's it's like they were it's it's like they don't communicate with the same brain or something. Yeah, yeah. 
There's definitely a block in there. Well, I think it's biblical. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Yeah, I think Didn't that's about. Paul say that? Yeah, that's about masturbation. No, it's not. It's about. <laughs> it's about. I it, never it's about told. giving money. Or I something. never told the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's how God finds so out. So none of them get jealous. God looks at the other hand. So my right hand didn't know that the left hand was holding a full glass of Diet Coke Ooh. and just and gestured in an upward sweeping motion. Mm. And you were talking. Is it this, every, to, all, all, all eyes, all on, eyes you. on me. Yeah. And I'm like, Badoof, and I just send this thing flying right at my son's crotch. Oh, that's better than the Dean's crotch. And then it splatters all off of his crotch. On to a little bit of the Dean. Oh, a little bit of the Dean. A little bit of the Dean. But it was Diet Coke. It was it Diet was, Coke. It wasn't regular Coke. It We'd have a real problem. It wasn't red wine. We'd have ants at it that was, point. It wasn't red wine. But he had on like, and then I'm like, oh, you know. and I, How'd you recover? It's a pretty embarrassing moment. Well, I I was like. You ran out? <laughs> I don't know what I said, um, but I think it was something like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. What did Lincoln do? He, I, oh, okay. I know Lincoln. He, first of all, Lincoln's too sweet to get upset in the moment about it, or maybe to get upset at all about it. <laughs> he probably was like, "Dang, Dad." <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much. It. Pretty much. It. He was like, oh, Dad, Dad, Dad." And I'm like looking over. I'm like grabbing a stack full of napkins from the bar, and I'm like dabbing my son's crotch in front of the dean. Uh, well, right. You, why don't you hand him the napkins? I, I don't know, man. Because right, I was okay. like, this is where you really I was screwed like, up. And I was thinking, you know what? This is, this is an opportunity for me you to demonstrate. Just him the napkins. This is an opportunity for me to demonstrate how caring I am, how to, son. How to recover <laughs> from an embarrassing moment. You got to keep your cool. You got to be a little self-deprecating. I'm like, well, look at, look at what I've done here. And um, then the like the senior is like coming in and bringing in more napkins and mopping up Oh, he stuff has like and, an assigned senior. Well, he was in the group. He was the guy talking okay. to us. You should have given the senior the napkins. <laughs> yeah, and at that point I was like, well, uh, I'm putting you to work. That's what I said. How much coke was left? I'm putting you to work. How early in the drinking phase was it? It was uh, very early in the drinking <laughs> phase. There's a lot of coke down there. Oh, God. Man. And, and, um, I just really think it took the pressure off Lincoln to have to, you know. Yeah. I was, you know, I was trying to make it. No, was like, yeah. Trying yeah. to make it easier on him. That's by, what it was about. By taking taking the brunt of the embarrassment. The old ge- onto myself. The old gesture with one hand and hit something in another hand. I mean, that's a special kind of thing to it's, do. It's like the last. I was. I was. I was like. Because if you just watch somebody do that and you weren't listening, it just looks like somebody goes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> That had to be intentional, I, I, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's watch the replay on that one. Yeah, yeah. I, apparently, his left hand doesn't know what his right hand's doing. <laughs> um, you know, I just, I was already a little bit concerned about you know those environments, and I don't want people to know me. I don't want to be the one who's recognized. Yeah. And it's like this is about Lincoln, and right, yeah, yeah. this is about you like, don't want to do anything to draw any attention to yourself. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> And uh, so Lincoln was very gracious. He uh, he he didn't he didn't he never let me have it. What about the dean? What did the dean say? You know they were all gracious. Oh really? And I didn't. You know I I kept my poise. I was just like, you know, it happens. Yeah man, it happens. Sorry about Stick that. Stick around me long enough, it'll happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean at least it wasn't. Hit. And uh, so I was like, you know what? And then the conversation. And then I continued the conversation. It opened a door. Well, it. I just moved on, That's and I was okay. like, you know what? The best thing I can do is demonstrate to my son and anybody else who's watching, which is everybody apparently, that you just got to pick up the pieces or sop yeah. up the pieces, yeah. and just move on. Right. You know, it's not. You don't get quiet. You try not to get red faced. You get louder, and you, you get louder. <laughs> <laughs> you just. It's like, well, that yeah, that happened, and it's over. You know what? Let's yeah. just move on. Yeah, and yeah. I, but I didn't say that. Next round's on me. I just acted like that. Hold it tight, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I le- legitimately, that's how I coped. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate how you move on from an embarrassing moment. Well, yeah. What are you gonna do? Walk away? <laughs> right. Well, droop your head and just. 
Well, it, slink back. A it little is. Bit. It is. Is the instinct. It is fitting. Bury that, your face in a napkin, perhaps. It's fitting that you're telling me Run this out. story uh, about an embarrassing social situation that we re- will now reference, you know, for years to come, um, <laughs> because one of the things that I the th- the show that I watched an entire season of. Uh-huh. Well, let me let me first of all. I, I, I wasn't just sick. I had COVID. I haven't. I haven't said. Can that. we say that? It's just one of those things that, for some reason, nobody said that you had COVID. Well, I want to talk about it because. So, good mythical evening. When I when I knew you were sick, you didn't. Obviously, you didn't know you had well, it. Well, to be, I want to be clear because we're we're very responsible around here. So, when I got cold, so Jesse got cold symptoms. This is the second time this has happened. First of all, Jesse got cold symptoms on like earlier in the week, like Sunday night, Monday. And uh, <clears throat> this is also the same thing that happened last year. We made love. Okay. Um, Great. And I and uh, as we do often. And uh, this, you know, I didn't was involve like, repeated coughing on one another. No, I did, are you into that? D- I didn't. I, I, I there was no uh, lip. <laughs> there was no lip lip to lip kissing for that reason because it was just like a little bit of a cold at the time, right? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You need not kiss. Right, and uh, it need not be a part of it. Well, it usually is, but when she's yeah, like, it, "I'm coming," they don't kiss me. But it need not. Coming down. It so. need not. And then she goes on to basically have a very mild cold. She's super religious about not about that, but about testing for COVID. And uh, so when she got sick, she tested uh, twice. We've got tests at home, just like we got a bunch of tests here. Okay, tested negative twice. So I was like, okay, well, it's not COVID. So then on like Thursday, day of GMM, it was really like Wednesday night, like I'm starting to feel a little bit, oh, damn it, I'm getting that cold that Jesse got. So I tested that morning, tested negative, and that's when I like texted you got you and Brian and Stevie, and I was like, well, shit, I got a cold. Obviously, we're not going to not do it. It's not COVID. I tested. I got it from Jesse. She tested twice negative. Right. And so... We're good to go. Now, by Thursday night, I don't know if it was obvious. I felt like horse shit all throughout Good Mythical Evening. It was like It was not obvious. It was getting worse. And um but I was like I got to pull through, man. You sound worse now. You didn't sound because it was that early stage, you did right? Good. You did good. And uh you were drunk. And then yeah, that did help. Well, it helped in the moment to feel yeah, bad, but I think that like lot- getting hammered right when COVID <laughs> is actually setting in. I think I might have COVID. Let's Probably get not the best <laughs> idea. Hammered. So like Friday, I got real bad. Friday night, I had a fever. Saturday morning, I wake up and I test again. I'm like, I gotta test again because I got a fever now. And positive, and not just positive. Like it looked like somebody took a red sharpie and went across the control, the uh, you know, the sample part of the okay, the other uh, second line besides yeah. the control line. On the test, and I was like, "Well, damn, it's the same test." It's to like, quote Usher, "You got it bad." Yeah, and for some reason, this didn't show up. I don't know. It's that new strain going around, whatever. And then it proceeded to make me re- pretty damn sick, just like last time. Same pattern. Jesse gets a cold. We make love. She doesn't get. Of course, last time she got. Co- she knew that she had COVID eventually, and it was a pretty bad cold. But for me, it was worse. Like multi-day fever, aches. I believe then I got it. From you yeah, last I think, time. No, I think you got it from somewhere else, the timing based, based okay. on the timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's going around again. You know, we're in the midst of like the surge or whatever. Yeah, and once you tested positive, that's why I was like, man, I'm glad I didn't well, I felt that horrible. sex doll after I, you. I felt horrible for you. I felt horrible for Ed. Because like, we've been really, you know, we're, we're, we're very strict around here about if you got symptoms, you you don't come into work. You, you, or you, well, you, you put on a mask if you're going to be around. And, um, uh, so I just felt bad. I was like, man, I exposed a lot of people. So we had to do the thing where like we say, you know, there was an exposure. I think everybody knew it was me just because I mean, yeah, I was getting sick. And uh, but so far it seems like it we, we got it was, it was we, we got it was away contained. with it. Yeah. Um yeah. so but anyway, I had to basically hole myself up in Locke's room. Uh, I mean, it, during the day I would go cuz you know, Locke's in college. He's got a TV in there and it's just like we had some friends staying with us, and so I was like, and then Shepard hasn't had it yet. So I was like, I'm going to spend most of my time in here, and I'll just 
force myself to do what I hate to do, which is to relax and watch things. You know, it's hard for me to just let go and do that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to tell you about some movies I watched, but I'm going to tell you mostly about the fact that I watched all of season three of Dave, Lil Dicky's yeah. show, which I know you're also a fan of. I haven't finished this, this season. I'm not going to spoil anything. Well, I'm going to tell you one incidental scene that has nothing to do with anything plot-related uh, that informs something from your past. <coughs> oh, really? And anyway, so, oh, by the way, just so we're all clear, when we're recording this, I've now tested negative three times. And so I'm no longer contagious. I've got, like, this residual, like, cough, and this is from my voice is still kind of affected, but, you know, that'll yeah. probably be happening for a few days. But, um... You know, I think that first of all, we're both huge fans of of the show Dave. We just we 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 love the way that just the sort of surreal comedy nature of it, right? And now you have your experience that you had with with Dave Bird, Lil Dicky in real life. Right. Where we were at a party, it was you and I and Stevie yep. and I told the story on here, but to keep it short. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, Are you little Dicky? He said Wait, so the way that it worked was is that Link uh tends to uh, c just go up to people by himself. And, I mean, in, in, it, sometimes it's part of a, sometimes it's a strategic plan, but a lot of times it's just like the three of us will be talking and then you'll just kind of leave and go start talking to people. And me and Stevie would keep talking to each other. And I look up and you're talking to little Dave and then we find out. Little Dave. Little, little Dicky <laughs> and the conversation was. Yeah. He said, hi, I'm Dave. And I said, oh, I thought you were little Dicky. And he was like, <clears throat> I am, but you, that's not my real name. You know, Jay Z's real name is not Jay Z. And I was like, yeah, I did. I just, I was just, when I got, I was thinking when I got close to you, you didn't look like the little dicky that I thought from far away. But I didn't say that. And about that time is when it's kind of in a Stevie and I walked up, yeah. and you were kind of explaining what had happened, and then Dave said to you, "Do you remember exactly what he said?" He said... I, I remember the exact words because this is You're doing what, good. No, he said, you're doing great. He said, you're doing great. You're doing great. Because I, you know, I you was kind of... explaining yourself. I was embarrassed. He said, you're doing great. I, I didn't, I, I wasn't doing as great as I did when I spilt the stuff on Lincoln's crotch. See, I've learned. Now... I have more cool now than I did then. When we told that story... I was not doing great. When we told that story the first time... Yes, the show had not come out. The show had not come out, and we which told is that called story. Dave. I want to say that I think we told that story, and it kind of made him seem like an asshole. Yes. Okay. I mean, at least very snarky. Like you're doing great, like mocking you. Yes. It was reassuring, but in a in a, I thought a mocking kind of way. It wasn't mocking. Oh yeah. It wasn't mocking. I've watched enough of the show. Now I know that the show. Yeah. I know that the show. He's not exactly the guy, okay? But my theory... He says that line My in, theory in the show? is that he's not an asshole. No, I don't think he okay? is. Okay? No. I think he's a nice guy. I mean, I've guy. watched the show now. I, I think he's great. I think he's a thoughtful guy. I think he also is an awkward guy. Yeah. I think okay? we're kindred spirits. I think he's also an awkward guy because there's, there's literally... Mo there's literally at least one party scene in this season where he's kind of demonstrating the fact that he doesn't know how to navigate a party, okay? Now, yeah. that's an unrelated scene. I'm just thinking about that right now. Okay. But there is a scene in which a fan, an awkward fan, comes up to him and is kind of, you know, doing the thing that people do sometimes. They don't know what, what to say, and they start saying things. Yeah. And he says, you're doing great. <clears throat> and he says it in a way that is actually like he's, you know, it's endearing. And I replayed the whole story through my mind again. And I think that he actually was just trying to tell you that, like, it's fine, man. It's fine. Like, the fact that you didn't know, it's it's funny. We're all good. It's fine. You're doing great. I don't think he was mocking you whatsoever. I think that he I believe was that. actually just trying to diffuse the situation. Yeah. And I think we both kind of misinterpreted it. But do you think I was doing great? You're doing great, man. <laughs> no, I wasn't. That was the disconnect. No, you weren't doing great, but he was basically like, hey, his you're, you're not doing, doing great, great means it's okay. But it's okay. Doesn't it's matter. okay. 
It's okay, man. Huh. Uh, I'm going to feel weird when I watch that, it, even if, even though you've told me about it. Uh, you spoiled that for me, but I'm still going to feel weird when okay. I watch it. You know, so you... I don't want to talk about it. Do you legitimately it. believe I spoiled something for you? A detail? Well, you spoiled that experience for me of like the blood leaving my body. You know what? When he when he says, you're doing great. I'm like, oh my God, he said that to me. Is this whole you scene would, about me? You wouldn't have remembered it. I bet I bet my life. Oh, I would have remembered it. You would have no, because you didn't even remember what he said. You that you would it would have gone. I see you, you're doing. He said, okay, whatever. You wouldn't have remembered it, man. Okay. Now you're gonna watch it with appreciation. Uh, by the way, season three, great. All seasons, great. I love that show. I love the way they do that. Uh, I love the choices they make. And the final episode. Oh gosh. That's what I'm hearing. I mean. It's been built up now. Ben built it up for me. I'm building it up for you. So you'd probably be a little bit disappointed, which is worse than me spoiling one detail of one scene. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it's inspirational from a creative standpoint, you know. But well, I did also did the thing where, uh, what? That's, that's, oh, nothing. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, you know what? You're doing great. I also did the thing. Yeah, whoever says you're doing great first wins, you know, because it's like, it, 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 I do understand how it make it, it, it seems like a power play. It does seem like a power play, but I don't think that's what he was doing. I did that thing where you. Um, yeah, I don't think it. You're like, I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch movie. I'm going to watch some movies. And I'm going to watch some movies that. Yeah. Um, I've thought I've thought this a lot over the past. I'm going to watch months. movies that I feel like, as a person in professional entertainment, I should have watched. Yeah, right? you got time on your hands, and, and I know what you're about to say. And I'm going to watch movies that people are like, "You got to watch this movie for the." It's like for the sake of the history of cinema, you need to watch this movie. And like I was like, what, "Like being there." No, no, <laughs> keep keep going in reverse, brother. All right, Happy Madison. I'm older. Oh, oh, going in reverse. I thought what you were going to say was you didn't end up watching any movies because you realize you don't like watching movies. Happy Madison is not a movie. That's yeah, it is. Billy Madison. Oh, and Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Happy Madison is the name of his production company. Okay, whatever. Um, I'm doing great. Um, did you actually watch a movie? Because that's what I was calling you on. That you actually realized no, no, you no, didn't want to watch a movie. I watched f at least five. Oh gosh, that's so hard now. I was sick for a while. It's hard. It's hard to watch movies. Is all I'm saying. Because now we have all these other things that you can watch that uh, well, take less time, and it's a perceived smaller commitment to sit down and watch a movie. It's just, you know what? I don't do it anymore. It's just too much to handle. Movies are a thing of the past. Well, I think maybe you haven't opened yourself up to the way that you can get through a movie in 2023 with a phone in hand. Oh, in the phone in hand. I feel is, too guilty it, to no, the no, movie. No. My phone, my phoning during the movie was all related to the movie. Okay. It was like x-ray. It was like Amazon x-ray, but it was in my hand. I had a Diet Coke in one hand and my <laughs> phone in the other hand. They never touched. I did great. <laughs> what did you watch? Citizen Kane. No, you didn't. Yes. Why? That's so dumb. It's, it's not dumb. It's not. When you look. I've seen it. I saw it in the intro to film class. Okay. Okay. Well, hold hey, on. I mean, the editing, you, when, the editing was inventive, but now it's just like, oh, it was editing. You know, it's like you 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 have to you have to understand what didn't exist before it to appreciate it. When who you, cares? When you read about it first, yeah, you have to read about it. And I, but so that was the exercise. The exercise wasn't like I just want to be entertained. Uh, the, the the process was I'm sick. I've just that watched, sounded nothing like me. I've just watched a whole season of a television show. Not wasn't this was a different day. I'm going to watch stuff that feels like, I'm like, you know, I want to learn some stuff. You want to so, achieve something. So why do people care about this movie? Why was this considered the, why is this on every mo list of the best movies of all time? Um, why was it considered the best, the best movie of all time for decades? And then I'm like, oh, 1941, Orson Welles, he wrote it, he directed it, he starred in it, he produced it. It's kind of crazy. He's okay. So... Uh, and then as I watched it, I like would Google things about the different people or whatever. Yeah, because it's so freaking boring. Uh, I mean, it's definitely uh, you don't you can't recommend it in the way that you would recommend 
like a movie, like a movie that you want people to watch. Like, man, this movie's gonna blow you away. Of course, it's not gonna blow you away. It's from 1941, but like in context with a phone, okay. you have to have a phone. Okay, and a diet coke. Yeah. Uh, I was glad that I did it, but then I didn't turn around and then be like, I'm gonna now, I'm gonna go watch, uh, like, I didn't watch Charlie Chaplin's City Lights, man. I didn't go, I didn't go silent film. I almost did. Okay. But after doing Citizen Kane, I was like, okay, I don't know if I could take Charlie Chaplin. I, uh, I'll save that for the next time I get COVID. I'll save that for next year. Um, but then I, but then I've stayed on that list of like influential. I don't know. I looked at a couple of different lists. Then I went to, um, Mulholland Drive, which I had seen before. Nick Nolte? <laughs> no, no, no. David Lynch, a David Lynch movie uh, that's actually got um, the dude from uh, the HBO show, uh, The Leftovers. That guy? Justin Thoreau. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, David Lynch, man. Like, this, he, that, David, David Lynch makes like weird movies. Uh, it's got um, what's her name uh, for the the Naomi Watts in it too, and then some other. Okay, woman. so this isn't that old. Uh, no, it's like twenty twenty three years old. I mean, there's a there's a, a a lesbian sex scene in it. If that interests you, um, I would say yes, it does. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that one was weird, and I was just kind of like, I get it, I. It was, it was, it's okay, but like, there's just no heart in it. So I just was like, I, I, this, I don't think I would, th this is not like in my top favorite movies just because I'm not laughing at anything on purpose and I'm not, there's no heart in it. It's just weird. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So then I was like, okay, what next? Let's get a little bit more modern. I'm going to watch that Nick Cage vampire movie. Oh, yeah. Renfield. There you go. And, uh, can you recommend it? Rosebud. I think maybe I was movied out by this time. It's hard to watch a movie. Cause I was Can just, I say? I was just kind of like, I, this, I was hoping for more. It definitely wasn't as good as that uh, Nick Cage, Pedro Pascal movie. That, that movie that was, great. was perfect. Can I just say one more time, movies are dying. They're too long. They're too long. You need to break them up into episodes or reduce them to like 15 second pithy clips they can be scrolled vertically. But as it stands, they're dying. Well, they're the, gone. You know, you can watch it as a gimmick, but, hold on, but this no, you're not going to enjoy it. This doesn't happen in the theater. We don't though. have capacity for it anymore. Okay, first of all, for, I think that you should resist this. It's over. Secondly, movies are over. This doesn't happen in the theaters. And I won't let my creative business partner, who co owns my entertainment company with me, say that movies are over. But I'm just, you know what? If you, are you saying that as half of Rhett and Link or are you saying that as only Link? I'm saying that as somebody who's just trying to get a little clip on TikTok. Oh, okay. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Well. Movies are done. I disagree with you. And I, here's the thing. You know what, I also disagree. Here's the thing. <laughs> you watch it with a phone if you're watching it at home which the thing that, and I don't mean this for every movie. There's lots of movies that I don't need a phone for. I mean, Citizen Kane. I mean, anything before 1950, you got to give me a phone. I got to have a connection to the modern world to get yeah, through. Tell me why this should be good. But the, the other piece of it is I think that uh, if you're like a, G, a Gen Z person, this is how you watch things already. And I was, you know how like sometimes you like make a video or we make something and you want to like show it to somebody like, oh, it was a new video that we've been working on and you yeah. want to show it to your wife or your kids or whatever. And, okay, yeah. And, the, and if they're on their phone, it's like, oh get, gosh, get, get off your phone. Look at this masterpiece I've made. <laughs> Every detail was intentional. I just thought about how filmmakers, the idea of somebody being on their phone while something important is being said. I know, that's why I don't, I Every can't single do it. second. But this doesn't happen in the theater, man. Theaters, you're comfortable, you're laid back, you don't need to, you can't be on your phone in the theater anyway. Yeah. Movies at home are dying. I'd like to make an amendment. Movies at home are dying. In a theater, they'll, they'll, they'll go on a few more years. A few more years. And I'm here for it. Um, okay, so anyway. What's I, your rec? Uh, Citizen Kane. No. My have I have we 
Have we we probably recommended Dave as a show before already. Well, I'll do it again. But I'll recommend season three. Okay. And you do need to start with season one and two. All right. But yeah, I just you know you gotta watch it if 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 you if you like. I mean, we're not doing anything like it on the Rhett and Link channel in a sense. But that I feel like the same place that they're coming from creatively. I like to think that they're accessing a, a similar. Um, inspirational space. Well, there's creative juice. That's a narrative it's not creative thing. Juice. That's a narrative I mean, thing, but like they're making choices because they like the choices that they're being made and they're trying to say something that's another layer deeper than just the thing that they're showing you. And I so, I thought season 3 was it, a little slow, but it, I'm I'm hanging on for the part that was inspired by me. Okay. Yeah, I, d I don't believe it was. I just believe and we've now learned this is something that Dave Bird says when uh, in situations where he feels like somebody might be embarrassed about what they're saying or doing. You're, he likes to say, you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah. yeah so. No, I was saying to you, you're oh, doing great. You're, you're doing great. And you know what? You've done great because <coughs> you've made it to the end of this Ear Biscuit. Let us know what you think uh, by interacting with us using hashtag Ear Biscuits or leaving us a voicemail. I love it when you leave us a voicemail. one 888 earpod one Hey, Rhett and Link, my name's Abby. Um, I just have to say, my Google Maps glitched out as I was listening to your 1984 episode of the pod, and I got to listen to you two berate us millennials for not knowing how to use paper maps while I took several wrong turns with my glitched out Google Maps. Fine, you're right, we rely on technology. Rub it in, why don't you? Thanks for everything you do, love the pod, bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.